Testing. One, two, three, four. Units. One, two, three, four. Missing. Hi, everyone. Hugs out for missing sky. Going through hell. Hello, sweetie. And it's been, you know, that's why we're here each night. Because this stuff is devastating families. Uh, I haven't stopped. I haven't stopped. <laughs> I slept a little bit. But I'm compiling a total picture for everybody. Right from, I'm not going to give it away, I guess. And uh, I got half of it done. I got everything, I think I got everything downloaded now. Everything's in the folders. One folder left to go, 140 pieces in that one. 19 in another one. So 160 pieces about Fukushima, headlines and uh, information. And I'm, it's another one of those unit one, two, three, four, five, and six type of videos where I break, I break down the entire deception. Hang on, I'll check my audio. I checked my audio. Got to turn it on first. I think I got everything downloaded now. Yeah, I'm stuttering like a normal person. And I came out and I said hi to everybody and then I started talking. <laughs> That's because I was reading Mrs. Missing Sky's comments. And I was actually going to start off the video tonight with Missing Sky comment from the last stream about, uh, what was it, radon causes is attributed to half of all lung cancers. And, you know, I want people to realize there's 65,000 chemicals out there that are uh, grandfathered in by the Environmental Protection Agency when they opened their doors in 1981 for business. They were started, I think it was in 79. And when they hung the shingle outside the door, they grandfathered in every chemical known to man. And also that when you're pumping gas into your car, or your land mowers and stuff like that, you're getting a serious dose. Or if you're in rush hour traffic, you have to breathe in all these particulates. And I don't know if I know anybody out there that changes the air filters on their car and keeps the windows closed. And, uh, and But they need to blame it on something else always, see? And so blame it on something natural, and then when there's a big release of radioactive material, just keep coming out and saying radon. I haven't got my, my, my collective thoughts. And I just want to make sure everybody was aware of how that game actually works. And that's what it's all about. Uh, as these cancers and deformities show up, they'll blame them on cell phones. They'll blame them on anything, make no mistake. They'll blame them on me, you know. They'll blame them on you, if they can. And think about the aerosols you spray in your homes. Uh, you know, like four million particles coming out of that spray. And if you breathe that stuff in, you don't know what that is. That's a concoction of the 65,000 regulated chemicals. And that's why they're allowed to put 4,000 chemicals in tobacco. And yet they still try to make nicotine the evil one. And they put, they've put they always done this, 4,000 chemicals in cigarettes. And so people ingest that as a byproduct that sticks to other people's clothing. Think about your laundry. How when you go and you buy laundry, uh, it actually poisons you. The first couple of washes, it contaminates all your other clothing. How this stuff gets dipped in formaldehydes and gets dipped into other toxins so that it always looks really nice on the rack. But after you wash it, it doesn't have that glean, it doesn't have that shape that you like so much when you bought it. Because that was chemicals that they put in it to hold that shape and that glean, see? And then you think about chemicals that you put in your hair and chemicals that you wash your uh, floors with your automobiles with, the interior of your vehicles. Think about how you cross-contaminate by putting your hands in your mouth all the time, how you breathe in so many variables in uh, perfumes. And think about the jewelry, how you pick at stuff sometimes, or how you get this stuff on your fingers and you put it in your mouth because you're playing with your jewelry. A lot of this stuff is very caustic, very bad stuff. It gets into your lungs. And so, you know, if the actual true numbers were out there, radon would be a very, very low number for uh, lung cancers or any other type of cancers. Otherwise, you would see 
Like, you know how houses have smoke detectors? You know how houses have CO2 uh, detectors when you have propane furnaces and stuff like that? So you got to think about, you know, if this stuff was really so terrible, they would have detectors for that too. But the reality of it is your Geiger counters in a bad home might pick up 10 Beckwells of radon. And so in order for so many people to get cancer from something that is really truly innocuous in its typical form, it's just in your basement of your houses, it can come up through the cracks. But do you know of anybody that died of radon? Radon, I can't even pronounce it now, radon expo ex, uh, exposure. And so that's a really important point for everybody to take away is that you're poisoning yourself with the toxins in your cupboard, the toxins you use for washing your clothing with, cleaning your floors with your counters with, particularly just anything that came off a supermarket shelf is toxic. And a lot of us is green and eco-friendly. And that's probably some of the worst stuff imaginable. You know, you see bottled water out there with fluoride. Now with double fluoride. And since, you know, this is this is the illusion that uh, the system gets away with. And the illusion is, uh, it's so easy to slip into the illusion, accept illusion, and then just go on and say everything will be okay. And none of this will come back and get you, you won't have to liquidate your assets in the future to pay for your cancer treatment. You can think that way, but make no mistake about it. This stuff will catch you, and there's nothing you can do about it in that sense. But there is a lot you can do about it. Uh, you got to learn to eat extraordinarily healthy. you got to learn, learn to not touch GMO, because it doesn't allow you to uptake nutrients. And you got to avoid breathing in noxic fumes. Even in small amounts, you got to avoid your children bring. And what I'm trying to say to you is because that displaces all the oxygen molecules in your body also. Also, inhibits performances and rational thinking. And so, like, if you've got to go into a, an argument or you're going to got to get into a debate that's going to get pretty testy, you have to learn to breathe in the nose and out the mouth and regulate your breathing anyway. I know I just flipped. But it's just a trick that I've used all my life. That's why I always wear a fool's face when I'm diving, so I can regulate myself underwater. Um, and so what that does is, though, it, it enriches your body with oxygen. You think more clear. You make more rational decisions. You don't uh, become... Uh, it, it, if everybody done that, you wouldn't have road rage anymore. Let's put it that way. If you done that when you were shooting in a game of pool, you would sink way more percentage. If you done that during a test you would be able to recall much more. And you should do it every day of your life. You should wake up in the morning and be breathing in the nose and out the mouth and regulating it. And you breathe through your shoulders, through your uh, chest and through your solar plexus, right? So you breathe three different ways. So you can expand your lungs by using those techniques. And you enrich your body with oxygen. Uh, unless you're in California where there's 1,500 buckyballs per cubic meter of air. Just go back to that slouch mode, much safer. Uh, but once again, it's these little kind of things will make a lot of difference in your life. It truly will. And that if you can get away from the GMOs because it has no nutrients, it has no potassium, no magnesium, no iron, doesn't have any calcium, it's engineered out. It has a little tiny trace bit of it, but they actually engineered it all out. So as an act of good faith, if the government would be to engineer nutrition back into our food, to engineer minerals back into our food. I know that's a novel thought. Uh, you know, it's a lot to take in at the one time and everything. And maybe even just, like, get rid of the formaldehydes and the glossophates in your food because I've never had it before. So, you know, it's just me. I know it's a little Dana being all pompous now. Come on, you know, Dana, don't pick on the corporations. They know what's best for us. We don't need minerals. We don't need potassium. Particularly in this day and age, do we? Because that's good for radiation. We don't need uh, magnesium. We don't need calcium in our food. Hell no! Why would the hell would you want that in your food for? Hi, Thomas. Anybody never heard Thomas sing? You should go check him out. Amazing vocals. Thomas uh, Schollenberger. 
And I never do know if I'm saying that right, and that's why I always got to pronounce it. That's C-H-O-E-N-B-E-R-G-E-R. You'll find him in my favorites, number two video. Janie is my, uh, the latest one that I got thrown in there. And it's extraordinarily, uh, so many talented people on this planet. And we're fortunate enough to have some of them with us tonight. It's pretty cool. Hi, Ken. Ken was saying that uh, he heard they can eat uh, 32 grams of plutonium. And, but you never watched him eat 32 grams. He he repeated that. He never sat there and said, Shit, I'm going to eat 32 grams of plutonium. He's ta- he probably talking about plutonium, actually, instead of plutonium. He's certainly not talking about plutonium 239 or plutonium 238, right? Or 240, which then 239, and the 241 or any of their, you know, americium, their, product, their daughter products, or the, the daughter products of americium, or. They can engineer DCA into our food, just to go back to that one more second, as a sign of good fate to help beat cancers, to help your cells rejuvenate themselves. And you'll find links below about that. And the buckyballs I was talking about in California. These are very important stuff. Hi, Nuda. Hi, Lunar. I'm going to say hi to a few people. Thomas again. And once again, folks, you got to go listen to Thomas. Amazing vocals. Just, just a pleasure to hear. Mickey Smith. Uh, Ken... Uh, touch Ken on that. Now, Ken, once again, you know, these people are not saying they ate radioactive plutonium, right? Because that's what come out of those reactors. All the reactors had plutonium in it. One, two, three, and four. I believe it's five and six, too. But I got that information. That is a fact. Thanks, Thomas. You're a good man. You're, good. You're a good man, buddy. And you got amazing vocals. We really, that's something we covet around here, is people with amazing vocals. Because uh, that lasts forever, that music, right? That never goes away. That's that's a very precious gift. Just passing through, uh, Lunar, Annie Beck, Albert. Let me see if I can get a few people. DC, hi, Craig. Thank you. Now, who am I forgetting? I wonder. Mickey. Uh, ba, 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 ba. I know I'm forgetting somebody. Just give me a moment, folks. So anybody know? We're live streaming. I like to say hi to folks if you're watching this video later and you're not aware of what's going on. If you're watching it now and the comments are to your left-hand side and they're moving, that means we're live. And we're live every night. Um, I miss some nights, not very often, but uh, that's because I'm researching for an actual video so people got something besides me talking while we're waiting to get in the studios. Uh, Mark, hi Mark, Bush, B-U-S-C-H, once again with the names, hi Pam, Toxic, too good there, I got awesome, I'll keep scrolling, and I'm missing everybody now, Stetson, I didn't have to uh, unspam you, um, Punisher, you got spammed on every Comments you made so far tonight. I've been on spamming you all night. Uh, I'll put your name back in the list again. I don't know what the hell is going on. You should be. I, I think I'm after putting you in there twice anyway now. But you keep showing up as, as shocking really. You don't even get a comment in. Stormy Cloud. Missing Sky. Yeah, we're trying Missing Sky. Just let you know that we actually do care. Hi Grouchy Pepper. Henna uh, Tazpez, I almost got it that time, yeah, yeah, Dana getting better, I was practicing. Hi John, thank you. And I raise my voice all the time, I'm hard case sometimes. So we started off on a bang, hi Angela, yeah, uh, did I get everybody, there you go, here we go. Looks like I got everybody. And Gary, I never got you, I just seen your name, do I remember seeing your comments when I was earlier? <coughs> and so we covered the radon with the EPA grandfathered in 65,000 chemicals because that was important that I get that out there for everybody to have another narrative and the plutonium some professor says it's safe to eat 32 grams he's not tired about the stuff to come said of Fukushima <laughs> he's not talking about radioactive atoms from a nuclear meltdown, plutonium. He's talking about probably polonium, and it sounds like plutonium. They love doing that stuff. Hey, you're welcome. Uh, checks and balances. There you go. See, I never got to say hi to you. 
And you got to realize, folks, uh, I would love nothing uh, more than be wrong. Even a little bit <laughs> would make me happy. You know, unfortunately, that's not so. And all I share with you is the choice ones. I got so much. I met so much. I downloaded, so let me see, what is it, 160 today. And I got to get them all in the categorize them. I spent 20 minutes on the audio and rendering and everything else last night. So there's 20 minutes worth of that stuff all ready to go uh, for my project that I got showing up in a few days. And I cover, I'm cover. i not going to miss nothing. I'm not going to miss nothing. And I'm probably going to cover 300 things in it, at least, if not more. But it'll be good. It'll be, you know, it'll be organized by categories. And I'm going to overwhelm all the opposition out there. We got 10 different ways to beat up every one of them. That's what I'm trying to do for people. I'll give you 10 different ways so you don't have to repeat the same stuff all the time. You can beat them up with that one and beat them up with this one, beat them up with that one. And so, and, I, and I'm sad that I got to say stuff like that. Sad that I got to do stuff like this. It's sad that the trying to get your hands on a nuclear scientist is is crazy. But you can get uh, the dummies like uh, Jay Cullen from University of British Columbia and Ken Busler from Woods Hole Oceanographic. Surely, to goodness, they got a nuclear expert they could have put out. Both of those. You mean to tell me that the University of Victoria, the best they can come up with is Jay Cullen, who studies phytoplankton with nuclear isotopes <laughs> and says that is no issue? Do you have any idea how shocking that statement is? And that Ken Busler with Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution is the guy to roll out. He's not a nuclear engineer. He's not a nuclear scientist, for goodness sakes. But Woods Hole probably got one there. And so why are they putting out these two baboons? Really, seriously, that's what these people are. Out there manipulating lines saying that CC-137 turns into potassium-40. And they're all doing that, see? And they're getting away with it. They have been for a long, long time. And we need to uh, snap that paradigm, including them at the same time. And they, they didn't like that. They've been here hammering at me. I don't, not that I care. But they've been, how dare you ruin a man's reputation who worked... So hard all of his life. I sent him a message. He says, I got a novel idea. Try not lying. Try not equating potassium-40 with radioactive isotopes. And I probably won't... You won't come under my radar. Try try telling the truth. Why are you... And I asked him, you know, why are you even speaking anyway? But they came at me pretty hard about that. Especially Jay Cullen from University of Victoria, BC. I got a whole lot of flack. But I, I uh, messaged them all back, personally. Because, hey, you know, could be the wife, could be the dean, and they're struggling with pains of conscience. And so they should. And so they very well should. At what point will somebody stand up and make the stand? That's coming. I mean, the nuclear industry is dead. It's not going to last much longer now. I can't even see it lasting five years. Because they can't hide what's happening any much longer. They can't hide what happened to the Philippines. Even though they tried, you go to Wikipedia, it says 155 mile an hour sustained winds. No, it wasn't. It was 195 up to 225 gust sustained. Tore apart 44 provinces. 15 million people displaced. This is the biggest, fastest thing that's ever touched land. And went over Tokyo and Tokyo's, uh, Tokyo is hell. No one should be in Tokyo. Tokyo is not fit to be in. Japan's not fit to be in. 30,000 square miles is Japan, folks. It's highly radioactive. 30,000 square miles. 30,000. That's staggering, okay? That's more than all the other hot zones on the planet combined, period, put together. That should be off limits. The entire country would be off limits by the rules and regulations we had four years ago or say three years ago, just before the accident happened, and they've been jacking up. Um, like Canada got 300 times background radiation, which shouldn't be an equation, of iodine-131, and said it was no big deal. It was minuscule. I ever caught the people that said that, catches their name, they're getting a shot in the head. Hi, Miss Milky. Because 
that really gets under my skin. That's an outright fabrication. And that was the beginning of the chain of disinformation being hit away. They hit it away under the National Security Alert. Right? Under the National Security Order. They're not allowed, our government is not allowed to talk to us about it. They're gagged. See, that way they don't got no pain in the conscience. Oh, well, you know, we're gagged. I'll gag you. There are a lot of people that are gagging you in the future, okay? Because hiding that away from us is the seriously issue, is the serious issue that you're not going to get a pension now because of that. Engineering nutrition back into our food, I mean, it shouldn't take a Fukushima to do that, but that would be a sign of good fate. Taking the toxins out of our food, that would be a sign of good fate. Taking down the, the radiation detectors, that's a sign of bad fate. That's a sign of betrayal. Because you were hired to keep that running. Particularly in that moment. You were, you were authorized in this particular moment to spend whatever money it takes. To put a radiation detecting multi-million dollar operation in every community on the coastline and in our country. Under the authority of every Canadian out there. That stands to get hurt by this. You know, our government and is no longer a government. They, they don't got anybody's respect. And as this comes out, what we're saying is nothing. You should hear what people say in town when they find out, when they actually get it. I don't help things. But by saying that your government turned off the radiation detecting and they didn't stand their ground, they didn't, you know, because just a handful of people ordered that. Just a small handful of people ordered that. But everybody else failed it. They didn't have to follow that order, right? They should have went to the local newspaper. The government knew, especially the upper uh, government, they were well aware of what took place. And for that, they will pay the ultimate price, uh, including everybody else and everything else on this planet, every aspect of life on this planet. And the, well, the Pacific Ocean is, is gone. That's gone. It's shocking. It's shocking that they think that they can keep hiding this. See, they were led to believe there was a small release, right? That's probably what happened. And because that's what all the models are showing, just the initial release, but it was devastating when it's put into the models. And so they had to turn off the radiation detecting equipment, or you'd be going, well, it was high this day, this day, that week, that month, that year, that decade. And so 50 um, becquels of low-level background radiation will cause permanent lesions to your organs if you're living in that environment and we live in that environment because this stuff doesn't just land in your country land in your communities and then just disappear it doesn't work that way it, it it'll never disappear the effects of it you can you can never escape it and that's why they evacuated 7500 communities in russia in the late 40s permanently that was because of they were throwing the yellow cake into the river. And this is not um, uranium deoxin, dioxide. This is yellow cake. This is contaminated with all the heavy metals, all the americaniums, all the neptunians, all the really bad, naughty stuff that shouldn't be on the planet anyway, that are man-made, that are supposed to be put in at least, you know, um, toxic waste site, if not a sarcophagus, which is what the licensing agreements are for these places. But the pools boil dry if they don't fill them up. So isotopes are being released into your communities all the time in all these nuclear power stations. Like Canada, the, the ones in Pickering and Ontario are right on the biggest water supplies in the planet. That's what they're going to affect. The fallout from those plumes will blow all over the Great Lakes and everywhere else. And so a handful of people to keep their jobs will murder the rest of us. They will literally murder the rest of us to keep the law alive for just another paycheck. Just so they can steal another battery out of a government car or jack another gas tank of gas with the credit card for free. That's what these people like. They, they, they're like children where they don't see any further than the end of that day and not even that far. What can they steal next? What can they... What, how can they deny doing their job? How can they avoid doing their jobs? It's because there's so many of them. And so we need a purge, a big purge. And that's coming because nuclear power is going to end. 
And there's so many of them out there living on nuclear power in our government because of the lobbying, because of the lobbyists. Because there's 200 industry, two, uh, two million industries based upon nuclear uh, byproducts, nuclear technology that should never exist. That we could have used almost any other kind of technology to get a better, a much better, a much safer, a much longer lasting, a, a much more beneficial use of. You, everything that we use for nuke is permanently friggin' bad for the planet. Everything, every technology that comes out of nuclear isotopes and nuclear plants is bad for every living thing on this planet. We could have used all that money, all that manpower, all those brains to solve all of the problems we got. There's 4,800 peer review academic studies every day published. Not count much, not published. If you took all those institutions and you put them to work on solar power or electric cars or electric grids or, or water purification, how long do you think it would take to solve some of your issues? Not very long. If you took 4,800 peer reviews or more on putting work on putting nutrition and taking the toxins out of your food, putting nutrition back in it, how long before society would have a higher IQ, would have a more dry piano, would be able to develop technology if you put them to actual work on it. But when all you do is use most of your precious resources to make weapons that that have to get used because what's, what's the sense of spending all that money? You've got to have the wars to use the weapons. And then all the nuclear technology, we, we take the uranium-238, the most hideous thing on the planet, and we go and we fire it in other people's countries. That's the best we can do. The A-10 Warthog shoots a ton and a half of uranium left over from production of nuclear missiles. They've only used two on this planet for war, and we got how many on this planet? It's endless. And we fired them in other people's countries. That's dirty bombs. Every one of those little bullets and the big bullets and the A-10 Abrams tank and the A-10 Warthog, every friggin' bullet coming out of that tank, everything that gets fired out of there is depleted uranium. And so when that smacks into people's homes and their water, you're releasing big chunks. As it goes through the air, it, it catches fire. And you got to remember, pounds and pounds going through the air... And a gram will produce more radioactive atoms than all the grains of sands on all the beaches on the planet. So when they're firing two or three miles away, all that ground on the way is covered in radioactive atoms. That's the aerosol. And if they fire in the communities, which is what they did, they fired in every home there. And then that hangs low to the ground. The children are breathing it. And we're not a society anymore. And it's all because of nuclear military industrial complexes retarded, destructive quest for directed energy weapons and to uh, solve equations. And so that's why they use these magic fuel combinations to try to create these frightening isotopes to see if they can use it for directed energy weapons to blow up each other with. And if we don't stop them, they'll never stop. They'll murder the entire friggin' planet. They don't know how to stop. They're incapable of stopping Right? They make their money by murder. They make their money by raping. They make their money by slaughter and by creating 5 million orphans in Afghanistan. By raping 300 of their own every year, every day. What are they raping in the countries they're occupying? Right? Since 911, they raped over 300,000 women and men in the military themselves of their own. Yeah, that's something, that's something to be proud of. 300,000 plus rapes that we know about. What kind of society is that? And then you set them loose in the poor people's country where you create 5 million orphans and millions of widows, millions missing, millions in refugee camps to get 11,000 Taliban. All of that to get 11,000 Taliban. Bomb the shit out of Pakistan to get 11,000, that same 11,000 Taliban. Destroyed those two countries fire uranium-238 in everybody's home, in every river, every lake, every well, to get that same 11,000 Taliban. You grope uh, 700 million people a year to get that same 11,000 Taliban. You took away everybody's freedom on the planet to get that same 11,000 Taliban that all are controlled and paid for originally by uh, the American government. 
you know. This is sickest, and then the media allowed that to happen to you. Like the Bill O'Reilly's, particularly those types of people, the Sean Hannity, the Fox News, the Rupert Murdoch, CNN, MSNBC, they done that to you to keep a job and to sell a lie on purpose, knowing it's going to destroy everything, knowing all the murders, knowing all the rapes, knowing the 22 veterans committing suicides on the streets every day, willfully perpetrate those lies and those manipulations in order to keep a job, to have a paycheck, to have a Twitter account, and to hang out with stupid people, with shallow people, with people that literally murder to get word or two, that cut each other's throat all the time. You know, so the dumbest of the dumbest of the dumbest, the dumbest, they're truly the dumbest of society imaginable, that they, they took it to the most extreme. And what they ended up with, I'm sure, is not what they expected originally. And so everybody's led to think that that's the great life, that you really reach something if you were to be someone like Bill O'Reilly, the scum of the scum, the lowest of the lowest. But it turns out we got lower than that. We got Elsewhere Springer and Wiley, which locks up all of our academics. They get the copyrights to everything you pay for, everything you produce in your academic world. And the professors do it so they get their name down as they publish. Not that it'll ever mean anything to them. It'll never do nothing for them. But all that money, all that equipment you paid for was used, and then they locked it away, and you don't even know what it is. You don't have a friggin' clue what the 4,800 peer review academic studies are today, and they're locked behind paywalls. You can't even surf them unless you're willing to pay fifteen or $20,000 to get in there and start surfing. But a lot of that, you can't even get into those sections for sixty-five and $70,000. And a lot of these journals, you need hundreds of thousands of dollars just to go in and browse. But you paid for all of that. You created all of that. You got the power. And the nuclear power doesn't have power anymore. They have deception. And that's it. they got to come out and claim it's all like potassium-240, and that's all he's ever been doing, and that's what they're trying to keep doing, but it doesn't work no more. But they have to keep doing it because they don't know what else to do. They can't come out and tell the truth, because then you can easily see everything they ever said is a lie for sure now. So they got to keep the lie alive as long as they can, but they know it's dying. They know it's failed. They know they destroyed the entire planet, and they don't have any morals about it. They don't care. Right? The, the apologists are not apologizing, they're out there manipulating a lion, just like Jay Cullen was doing, and probably still is, and just like Ken Buesler from Woods Hole Institution does, where they equate cesium, uranium, plutonium with uh, potassium-40, which is insignificant indigenous background radiation. So if you got a banana, you got 12 becquels of potassium-40. If you got a glass of water, you might have 8,000 becquels of that potassium, and so 40, you drink that, and your body magically, what I call, off gas it. Because you can't put more in your body than is already here. You can't put more in an object of potassium-40 than is already here. Because that's everywhere on this planet. No matter how deep you dig, everything has that potassium-40. All life on the planet has long since been acclimated. But by using the numbers of eight and 9,000 becquels for drinking water, they can trick anybody into thinking eight or 9,000 becquels of uranium 234 and 235 is not an issue or that you can eat 30 something grams of plutonium by using insignificant 210 say right uh, and that's the game they've been running but they can't run it no more because it doesn't work no more now we understand now that every time we hear that that person is an outrageous lawyer that person is a fabricator they absolutely no different they have absolutely positively uh, no conscience whatsoever because they act actually know better. And so why should we have any pity on them? Why should we have any mercy on them? Why shouldn't we call them out? Why shouldn't we go to wherever they speak? Why shouldn't we go to every lecture? Why shouldn't we call in every radio? Why shouldn't we call in? Why shouldn't we email them? Why shouldn't we dig up their phone numbers and phone them relentlessly 24 hours a day and tell them to fucking stop? Why shouldn't we? I can't find a reason. Can you imagine they charge you with harassment? Yeah, <laughs> well, we wanted them to stop fucking lying to the university students and to the people listening to them on the radio because it's fucking wrong. Take me to court any time you want. 
I don't care. I'd be happy. I mean, the only time the media ever fucking reported on anything anyway. I'll take on anything out there in that conversation that uses that kind of technique. You put me in the studio alongside of them and the radio alongside of them, they're done. They haven't got a chance. They can't stand up to a berating like I'll give them. They just can't handle that. That will destroy their little tiny world. Right now they live in a safe little world right up until now. Now we make videos and we call them out. We point it out. We humiliate them publicly. And they complain. Oh, you're destroying his career. He worked so hard. Did he? Well, why did he lie? Why is he fabricating it? Why is he using insignificant? That should never be in the conversation. But it's only used so you can manipulate the conversation and deceive the population. What kind of person is that? What kind of person does that? Why doesn't the media call him out on it? Oh, it's nuclear. You know, it's pretty complicated. No, it's not. Someone says potassium 40. You, hey, hey. You stopped him. So we're talking about nuclear isotopes, not bananas. If you're not going to be serious, why are you friggin' here? Right? Do we got anybody that can do that? No. Do we have Woods Hole roll out any of the nuclear scientists? No. They put out dummies like Ken Buesler, who has to regulate his breathing constantly. Because I listen to vocals. That's what I do. And that's in every aspect of my life. I'm very tuned in. And so when a lawyer is lying, it's pretty easy to recognize it if you're looking for it. And if you know what the law is, you can sort of learn what the signature is. And then if every conversation is like that, it's not an accident. It's because they're lawyers. They're worried someone's going to speak up. And so that's why they don't stop. I mean, the reality of it is, is that if we had a million people out there blog them out, they're done. Nobody will even hire them again. And they get called out everywhere they go. And then everybody else learns that that's coming for them too and they won't fucking do it. But as a society, we haven't quite reached that plateau of where that needs to happen for some reason. We are plateaued and we do need that to happen. That's all we need to happen. And it'll happen. It's happened when it's convenient. You see what happened to Rupert Murdoch. The entire planet turned on him. Then what happened? He's been apologizing. He closed news of the world. Because he knew you might go in there and see he was doing that every friggin' day. To every dead child out there. They were hacking their phones. And hacking their Twitters. And hacking their Facebooks. And hacking their MySpaces. Because that's what they do. That's why they bought MySpace. So they can have access to the dead children's messages. To drag people into the media. That's exactly what they were up to. That's what they're always up to. They're the lowest form of life imaginable. They can't survive without being parasites. That's the only way they ever survived. They were like that when they were young. They'll be like that when they're old. Except this time around, they ain't going to get that opportunity. Because everybody on the planet is affected. And so when they throw us down the hole, they go down the same hole anyway. There's nothing they can do about it. They're doing it to their own children, their own friends, their own families, their spouses, their inbreeding brothers and sisters and aunts and uncles. I mean, the entire system is about inbreeds. And the nuclear, you know, the nuclear industry has failed every aspect. It's, instead of putting in a sarcophagus, they turned it into dirty bombs and fired it into Iraq and Afghanistan and other people's countries. Can it get any worse than that? Yeah, they killed the Pacific Ocean. The phytoplankton can't survive an ocean full of radiation. So you're going to kill the oxygen of the ocean. If it goes down and hits the ocean floor, the cold water brings it right back up again. Remember, this is one ten thousandth of a millionth of a meter sizes. But it's still energy and it'll keep pumping out that energy for the entire life of it. Whether that's 4.5 billion for uraniums, 24,000 for plutoniums and their daughters, or hundreds of years for cesiums and wherever there's the iodines there has to be or the cesiums there's 30 times more strontium 90 extraordinarily long lives because everything that you hear about a half life has 10 times that life right so, so they, they they come after you every way possible to minimize what the words and 
you know, like Beckwalls and Millicives and Sieves and Rankins and Rads, and they keep changing the name so you can never keep on top of it. And there's thousands of isotopes, and it just makes it so difficult for anybody to wrap their mind around it that they end up taking whatever sounds good and walking away and regurgitating that. And that uh, those days are over. You can't hide what happens. You can't hide what's happening every friggin' day. You can't hide it from the jet streams or the opnus, upper atmosphere or the troposphere or the ionosphere because these particles are making it everywhere and they'll continue to rain out for many decades. And so we need to be able to get on with our lives by getting out of the way, getting out of the way of the jet streams where the most deposits are going to be. The entire northern hemisphere is blanketed. Japan is blanketed. And so every time they have storms that gets picked up and dragged all over the place it's a never ending it's like snow that never melts we've heard that lately but snow that keeps getting picked up and reliberated all year long all over the place and it's always miserable this stuff comes with a you know there's 4,000 beckles in the fog uh, in Tokyo 4,000 beckles in the fog up high because the fog was carrying it right well you know, because the, site, the whole country is so radioactive. You know, the cities around Tokyo uh, and Tokyo itself with a million Beckwells per square meter. They can't get rid of it. They can't even find it without the special equipment. But every time they go out with it, they find it everywhere. The whole country is polluted. They were going to move the government a couple of hundred miles west. The winds are from the west in Japan. That's how rotten these people are. Leave everybody behind. Move the government. 50,000 and 20,000 slaves west. I mean, it's sickening. That's not a society. That's not something to covet. That's not something to be proud of. That's something to run away from. And if we don't do it, who the frig is going to do it again? If we don't raise some consciousness about this, if we don't have a debate about it, if we don't put out a decent narrative so people got something to work with, so people can actually understand it, so they can wrap their minds around it and then look and discover on their own. Who's to be trusted? I can't trust any of them anymore. And like it's so hard, I, 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 I have to research every single thing over and over and over. Because if I make a mistake, it's going to get used to beat the shit out of me. They're not going to cover all the good stuff I do. They're just going to cover the mistakes I make. That's all they want to do. They'll go through everything I got, look for a mistake. They'll spend hours doing it, find that. Use that to destroy me. That won't work, but they'll give it their best shots. They'll do whatever it takes to work that out, to find that, and then to use it. Even just to marginalize me, it's worth it to them. Anything to take away a little bit of the reality, because they're monsters. These people are actually vicious, vicious monsters who don't want to tell the truth under any circumstances and spend their entire time their whole existence every day working out ways to manipulate us for a paycheck it's only for a paycheck they went to university to become pr these are the worst of the worst that society got to offer they should all be put into a joint snuff movie i would watch it i'm sorry i'd feel bad i'm sure but i would watch i would watch that to see them get snuffed that's how bad these horrible monsters really are they don't mind killing kids. They don't mind lying to all the kids, manipulating children. Uh, uh, how are they different from uh, mass murderers? I can't find a difference. There is no difference. They, they just don't see the victims directly. They don't have to pull the finger directly, see? They just got to keep the lie alive, and they get a big fat check and some perks, and they feel important, and they can break to their friends to make a lot of money, but they ain't going to tell them what they're really doing. They're not going to go home and tell their loved ones what they're doing. Nuclear PR firms will go home and lie. You know, Jay Cullen doesn't tell the truth to his own loved ones. Ken Buesler does not tell the truth to his own loved ones. He tells that lie. They live that lie. Their whole life depends upon it. Their whole future depends upon it. They train for years and years and years to take that lie and manipulate you. You show them the truth, they get angry at you because you call them out. The most unimaginable thing imaginable that somebody would be offended because you call them out 
Why, why ain't they embarrassed? Why ain't they humiliated? Right? Why don't they go hide away in shame? Because they don't have it. They don't have emotions like me or you. They don't feel love for their pets like me or you. They don't see that, right? They will cheat on anything that they're with. That they can't be trusted for anything. It's all about them, baby. And they want more. They never got enough. They can't get enough. You can't give them enough. You can, can't satisfy these people. The nuclear industry has sealed its own fate a long time ago by allowing these people into those positions. They needed them. They needed the psychopathic uh, employees to keep telling that lie over and over. But they can't hide it much longer. Oh no, the world truly is waking up to Fukushima. And that's because they got no choice. That's because it's a clear and present danger to every organism, the flora, the faunas, in the ocean, in lakes, in rivers, in your communities, your children. It's a direct threat to everybody. And it's a direct threat to them and their own children. And they refuse, they don't know, they can't, uh, I mean, you know, they, they know, but they can't stop doing what they're doing because then their families will know and find out and will despise them and will reject them. And so they're into this trap. Their parents will turn on them. Their brothers and sisters will hate them. Because when they find out what they're really like and what they had done and how they had lied and manipulated, that will come home to roost. And it's coming home to roost because of Fukushima. And then everything else comes out too. There will be no change unless we deal with it. We have the abilities. We have the capabilities. We have the absolute drive. We have determination beyond imagination to do things that are inconceivable. But here we are and we do things that are so incredible, yet we can't take all of our knowledge and all of our skills and use it for something good for a change to turn life into a new generation because a handful of people like the Bilderberg groups who are just puppets, you got to go way up the ladder, but that's a good start. These are the enablers. These are the sellouts for the countries and the states and the institutions and the corporations. These are throwaways. Every one of those is a throwaway. These are not um, like me or you. They consider themselves in that way too, that they're not like me or you, that they're better than you, that they're way better than you. You are nothing. That's how they think of you. They really truly do. And they will sell out everything you got. They will destroy everything you ever dreamed or hoped for. For a paycheck. For a little bit of power. Including their own family. Their very direct family. Their loved ones. Their own children. They will destroy all of them. In the hopes they can keep this alive. And suck on leech. On it. Like a parasite that they are. That they have been honed to be. That they are so good at. That a puppet. They... Once again, uh, if we had a million bloggers, if I had a million bloggers or we had somebody out there like us with a million bloggers and had, were able to get those people to all rise up at the same time, it's game over. If you could tear down the facade, if you can understand it, you can tear it down, right? If you can construct it, you can deconstruct it, then you could tear it down and that can be done, right? That's a fact. You, you can destroy their whole paradigm because you go after their families. You go after their brothers, their sisters, their aunts, their uncles. You go after their mothers, their fathers, their wives, their husbands, their children and, and educate them, right? And they turn on them. They bring about the change uh, from the inside spear. They're, you know, there's an old saying for where I come from years ago, if you can't get at a guy, you call up his wife. And if you're reasonable and you're decent, he'll end up doing the right thing because she found out about it. <laughs> if he wants, if he wants, and I say he in context of what I'm saying right now, but if he wants peace in that home, and that's what he wants, that's supposed to be where he goes to get away. And his old lady, no offense, is giving his wife is giving him a hard time. He'll 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 deal with whatever. The company will take a hit. If that's what it takes to get peace. Because that's his only refuge, see? Everywhere else is a threat to him. And so a lot of the people out there in the positions, they actually live that exact same way. 
and their whole life lives around the lie. They never let their children or their wife or their brothers or sisters or anybody else dress, particularly their aunts and uncles, the people that they actually allow to get close to them, uh, to a touch of the truth, because that destroys any respect that they had. And that was, that is, they can't handle that. That destroys them personally. It, it Money doesn't mean nothing to them. Say they need, it's about influence and about power. If you take that away from them by informing the masses, you take their power away. And that's, that's why they fight so hard. That's why they come out and attack so many different angles. Did I get kicked off again or what? They have labeled us as a virus. I'll say hi to everybody. We'll say goodnight to everybody. Maybe a short video tonight. We're up to 50 minutes. I think it was a pretty good video. They have us labeled. In other words, I think the nuclear power industry is finished. Because it can't hide what's going on. It can't hide you know, the implications of what happened from Fukushima and the ongoing crisis about it much longer. They just can't do it. It just takes one big story and the lid's over for them. You know, better sooner than later is the way I see it. Yeah, hi, Gra Connie, Grandma, Ken, Smith. I say goodnight to everybody. Lunar Legion, James Wong, and Craig, to uh, Thomas. Thanks, Thomas. Did you expect in shit clean green to show up? I don't know. Hi, News Eye. Annie Beck, DC, Lunar, China. Yeah, that's right, China. Oh, I got Miss Milky the Cloud. It says, please upload her videos. Hit the remix button, folks. That's under her videos. Albert, Kate. Thanks, Kate. Yeah, you bet. Candace, James Wong. Uh, Lunar Grandma, we're going through all the names again. I'll have to come in after and read everybody's comments. Checks and balances. Standing foot. Nuts for art. Mr. Hemi. Miss Milky. Dwayne. Uh, Lisa. Let me see. Say hi to a few more people. Had a long day. Long yesterday. Long Saturday. Today we got a part for the scooter. I'll end it on a part. So the ship does a part for the scooter, resistor, and the scooter does the same thing. So we'll contact them tomorrow. It's pretty depressing. Pretty, that's pretty depressing. And they still haven't taken the scooter back. It hasn't got any miles on it. It's supposed to do 30 kilometers an hour, but it only does eight and a half or something. It's unbelievably cool. Heated grips, all digital dash. It's got really nice forks in the front and disc brakes calipers right really nice really nice um, but it only goes nine kilometers an hour freak tricycle anybody don't know what i'm talking about next one the last one used to do i got rid of the governor so i was able to do almost 50 kilometers an hour on it but you're only legally allowed to do 32 in canada or whatever so we'll catch you folks tomorrow night it was a bit slow tonight because I'm trying to finish the other video and I realized I wasn't going to get it out tonight. And I said, okay, well, I got to go live two nights in a row. I crashed both nights. Instead of going live, I ended up crashing because I was... I'm not kidding you. I don't stop. I'm, I have to read everything and then find out if I can use it or not and then grab it and organize it and categorize it. And uh, it's not stop. I'm, there's something going on with me. I'm not, I'm not sure what it is, but anyway... I'll get the video finished and get it out, but it won't be tomorrow. And uh, that's important, though, that I get that one out there. I think that 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 one is really going to be... I don't think there's any another video on the planet that will cover Fukushima like I'm going to cover it. Man, I'm hoping that... Uh, so far, everything, the first 20 minutes of it, perfect. I got all that right. And so I got another 160 today that I got to do the audios for it. And then I got to piece it all together and bring in the other pieces. So you can imagine it's a lot of work. But it's worth it, right? It's worth it for you. Because that will allow you to show that to somebody. And they don't get to deny anything ever again. And they're so informed and so educated. Uh, they'll be thanking you, right? Because it'll make just 100% sense. No matter who you are, 
how educated, how articulate you are, that video, I think, is a game changer. You know, I'm learning. You don't do this every night, night after night after night after night, miss a few, but do it month after month, not learn a few things. And so I had to get most of it done so I didn't lose the scope of what I needed to do. And now that I got it all downloaded and organized and categorized, right, I'm just waiting for that burst of energy to finish the rest of it because I already got half the audio and rendering done. So it'll come out for sure, and it'll be a good one. We'll catch you folks tomorrow night. I'll be in after a cup of dandelion root tea. Remember, dandelion root tea, or dandelion tea, flowers, leaves, got every mineral and every nutrition your body could ever want. Every mineral and every nutrition. And GMO got none of them. So that's a start, and you need it. So And it's really good for you. You can eat every part of it or make tea out of it, folks. Take care. Boil it for 40 minutes. We'll see you tomorrow night. I'll be back.